Super. 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 It is I, your lovable baby boy, Brank, coming right back at you with the ever-present, ever-vescent, um, who am I talking to today? Who's this crazy boy? Evanescence. <laughs> Jank. I guess Josh. not. I guess this is done. Uh, just Josh. Uh, just Josh and ya. Um, Josh my bro around. Stuff. I feel like it's been a millennia. I think we spoke last week, but it feels like it's been way longer than that. What have you been up to? What have you been dreaming about? What is your uh, dream journal looking like these days? How full is it? You buying a new one? Um, you know where the premier podcast, Super BS podcast about video games mostly, but mainly we talk about dream journals and just proving your life as you using Pinterest and other forms of media to create the best you you can be. So what have you been doing with that dream journal recently? Have you been like sketching out your house that you will bring into life through uh, power of ideas and prayers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing different like sketches of myself wearing um, animal costumes. That's what I and, like to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like I, I dream about what it'd be like to be those animals and it's just so great it, to hear that. I really appreciate is. you bringing that to yeah. light, uh, joshing around. Yeah, I, but, uh, I know. But seriously, what, what? Go on ahead. a serious note, I uh, I was talking to the athletic director at the school I work at, and I was like, "Hey, what's the hockey situation like here in Central Texas?" And he goes, "There isn't a hockey situation." I was like, "That's a shame," because like I have this fantasy where like I'm Emilio Estevez, and I bring this like ragtag group of hockey Emilio! players. <laughs> and and they they raised to stardom and then they start a hockey team in Texas based on this team. You know, we can call them the Vultures or the Eagles or the Griffins. It's so funny because your dream kind of reminds me of my dream where I go to Texas and I'm walking around and I see somebody who's like you and I'm like telling my friend, I'm like, that's totally Emilio. And I'm yelling, Emilio! Emilio! <laughs> Everybody loves Night at the Roxbury. It's okay. Everybody got that you reference. You know, people don't talk about that movie anymore. Like, I, I remember know. when that came out, and then there's, like, Corky Romano, and, like, people always yeah. quoted Chris Kattan movies, but... Not anymore. Not anymore. The good days are Not done. Anymore. Even Will Ferrell movies, I feel like you don't hear as often about. You know, like, I, I personally hear about Wedding Crashers a lot, but I feel like even, like, um, what's the one where they, uh, they go to college and they start a frat? Oh, old school. Um, old school. Yeah, you know, you my boy blue. Like, I feel like that was such a common quote, and I haven't heard you my boy blue for a long time, okay? But can we, <laughs> like, talk about how funny that movie is, though? Like, That's yeah, incredible. It's such a shame that Todd Phillips won't do comedy anymore because he's afraid of getting canceled. Yeah, was he just doing Joker and Joker 2? Well, they, they asked him if he'll ever, like, write another comedy, and he goes... No, because that's career suicide these days. So he's just not going to do it anymore. It's sad. Yeah, it is it is it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I think my favorite line from Night at the Roxbury, which is what our show is pivoting to, a Night at the Roxbury fan cast, is uh, when they're talking about with their trainer about how worried he is about their uh, gym routine or whatever or about their muscles. He's like, I just got to tell you, I don't see you guys eating type calories and he's here, whatever he says. And it's like this heart to heart. Do you remember that scene? I, I can't remember totally what the quote is, but it's like the funniest quote from like a trainer because their life is supposed to be like <laughs> Beverly Hills, like uh, yeah. super rich kids, right? Oh man, yeah. that movie is incredible. So what I like but, the thing that sticks out in my mind the most about that movie is when they're talking about like what they're going to do the next day when they're in the jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I know what you're talking about. Molly, yeah, yeah, right Molly, before whatever Molly Shannon. The last, Molly Shannon. Yeah, they're yeah. I don't know. It's just like it. It just sticks out to me because like when I was in middle school, everybody always quoted that line, but they did it like in a moany voice. Oh yeah, oh dude, Molly Shannon's so funny. I I even watched uh, Superstar recently again, and that was it was pretty <laughs> solid. It's not hilarious, but it's 
It's pretty good. Um, I was just reading this article today saying about how you still don't need a PlayStation 5. That's That applies to you, right? You uh, you still don't have a PlayStation 5, right? That's why I brought you up on this podcast. This is a Kotaku article said you still don't need a PlayStation 5. Published on Thursday. So you read it. You agreed with it, right? Right? And then I instantly went out and bought one. So l- let me... Nice. L- l- let me... Um, let me let me let me tell a story here. Let me let okay. me break this Regale purchase us. decision down for you. you so I have been, you know, I've been talking to you a lot lately, right, about how I want to get a PlayStation and how, like, you know, keep, hey man, keep your eyes open if you see one. All right. Yeah. So all the big stores had massive drops this past week, and nobody was able to get one if you didn't have a bot. Like I spent like thirty minutes just click 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 trying to get one on multiple yeah. sites. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't get one. And then lo and behold, I read these articles about how these people with like bots scooped up like thousands of PlayStations and Xboxes. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 frustrating. It's frustrating because the common until they decide to start selling these physically in stores, the common man will not or woman or or game the common gamer, whatever gender you identify as, is not yeah. going to be able to get their hands. Hey, on. don't dead name people, okay? Here, right. that's not what our podcast right. is about, right? Um, but yeah, they will not be able to get their hands on these consoles. So, yeah. uh, knowing that Final Fantasy Seven, inter- I had just a really bad case of FOMO, man. And knowing that Intergrade yeah. comes out this week, I was like, I have to have this. So. I made a deal with the wife, you know, I was like, I'll cash out some of my stocks and uh, I'm going to buy this PlayStation from this guy here in Waco. So first there's mm-hmm. like two other people I was, I was it's chatting Waco, with Florida. Trying. Don't try to find him. Okay. Yeah, He's in right, Waco, Florida. Right. So there's, there's two other people I was chatting up trying to get this thing. And the first one was like, it was really weird because he was located down in Temple, which is about 40, 45 minutes from me. And mm-hmm. he goes... Okay, yeah, they're you can triangulating come, uh, you. They're triangulating yeah. you right now. All the fans are. <laughs> he, he goes, yeah, you can. Uh, c- I'll be home all day tomorrow. You just come down, and pick it up. I'm like, all right, cool. And so, but he was selling it for four hundred dollars. I was like, this seems a little too good to be true. Yeah. So then he goes. He sends me this address, and I Google the address. I'm like, this is like a this is a hospital. Like, what what is this feels weird to me now. And then he goes, okay, and then I'm just going to need you to send me a hundred dollars for a down payment. And I'm like, why do you need a hundred dollar down payment on the cash app? If I am going to literally give you cash for the whole thing. Yeah. And so I was like, it's not that I don't trust you, but I don't trust you. Yeah. And then he just never messaged me back after that. And then, yeah, that's yeah. There's a lot of scams going on right now. So well, you end up finding a little baby boy, and he had it right outside of his stroller, and you you trade him a candy bar for it, right? That's how it worked that's out. That's exactly how it went. But here's my advice to to the listeners here, though. Like, if you're in the market, if you're desperate enough, like me, and you end up getting a PlayStation from a scalper, don't use OfferUp. Just don't don't do it. It's like you're most likely going to get scammed on there. I was lucky. I found someone who was local. He he, who's like I want to say 15 minutes down the street from me, and it turns out he had created these bots and he was scooping up Playstations and Xboxes and using them to pay his college tuition. Yeah, I mean, so it's he smart. Was, yeah, he was turning like a two hundred dollar profit on them, and like I guess like I didn't really feel as bad, but you know, mm-hmm. I still don't like scalping the the concept of it. But I mean, I, any- I've t- I've talked at great length why I think yeah. it's fine. Um, if these companies cared more, they could make it easy. Like uh, what Microsoft was doing that we talked about, mm-hmm. where you can sign yeah. up if you have an Xbox One to their program that should help you get an Xbox Series X if you want it. Yeah, I think that stuff is good. I think the idea that every you know it, I'm a, as upset at scalpers as I am at Walmart, as I am at PlayStation Direct. At all well, these places for the way they set up these sales, they're yeah. just immediate. I guess. So that that's the thing too that I've been thinking about. Is it the the concept of scalping that I don't like, or is it the the concept of bots scalping that I don't like? And I think it's I don't like the bots. Yeah, so that is where I'll agree with you. I don't like the bots scalping. Um, I think that's dumb. But I have to admit, like these are people going out of their way to make their money. So I. I still put the blame at the big corporation who could put bot. There are ways to outsmart bots and it's not, you know, make you choose which crosswalk 
that you have. You know what I mean? Like the the fact of yeah. the fact of the matter is like they're allowing probably single credit cards to buy hundreds of these. Because it's really hard right. to get multiple credit cards, like 10 credit cards as a single individual. You can. Um, you know, it's not that hard, but it still is like and then that also brings to another thing. If we're gonna allow uh blame to be cast, why don't we also blame it? the credit card companies who will send you 10 credit cards so you can buy things with multiple amounts of debt and then you can do stuff. Why do we allow that stuff? But societally, yeah. there's so many issues. I just find it so hard to levy it at a kid who's making 200 bucks because I was a kid who made 200 bucks. Yeah. And, and I get that idea. Yeah. And like meeting this guy when, you know, when I went to go pick it up, he was, he's, he was a, seemed like a good dude, you know, like I, I honestly like, for some reason, when I picture like scalpers, I'm picturing like, you know, people who look like gangsters and like from like, uh, you know, they got the cigars in their mouth and they're sitting well, at they, a desk and they got their feet kicked up with mounds of Xboxes and Playstations yeah. and Pokemon cards. Well, they wear wife beaters and they're literally beating their wives while they're selling you the PlayStation or Xbox. So, you know, they're bad people. Right. And they also right. have they also have a uh, rabid dogs waiting to tear you into pieces if you don't give them what they want. And then they change the price on you last minute. They threaten to kill you unless you give them what they want. <laughs> bad no, I mean, you want it. I, I literally think most scalpers are probably like me, like a nerdy kid who, you know, I scalped Justin Bieber tickets when I was younger and I made like a hundred bucks or 150 bucks. And I was, that was like a week's worth of work for me at that time. Like yeah. that's incredible. So like, yes, is scalping dumb? Yeah, of course it is. But does anybody need to buy a scalped item? No, you could wait. Like I told you, I would help you buy it later. I get your FOMO because, you know, there's two games coming out this week for PS5, which we'll talk about probably around the E3 talk too. But, you know, Ratchet and Clank and Final Fantasy VII Integrated Remake. But otherwise, like PS5 is a super unnecessary purchase. In my opinion, Returnal isn't good. And that's the other game. Like it's not a bad game, but it's not great. Right. And... Miles Morales is on PS4, and Demon Souls is okay, but I've talked about it on here already. Like, I haven't wanted to go back, because in my opinion, it's a lot worse than Dark Souls. It's way harder and way more obtuse. So, yeah, it's it's going to be different for everyone. I think the quality of life, if you're going, if a PlayStation's your main console, and you want to have that speed of, you know, quicker load times and stuff, great. You know, if you don't want Xbox and you want to just have PlayStation, try to get it. But does anybody need it right now? No, not even really when June 11th. Uh, Ratchet and Clank will be great, but I think you could wait and get it fall whenever they start releasing titles. Well, like, uh, we said that about it being available by February. Remember when it yeah, dropped? We and thought that never happened. I thought so it would it's, be. It's hard to know for sure. I mean, I, I would hope that you're right because I'm sure with uh, E3 and, you know, whatever gaming state of play Sony's going to be doing, like, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of exclusive PS5 announcements. Yeah, but if Sony this? does anything during E3, they've already said right. multiple times they won't. So they could do something, but they've said they wouldn't. Um, but yeah, I, I get what you mean. Like, they're, it would be great to get these things, and they might not be available at the end of the year. But I got my PS4 two years in, and I didn't miss anything. I got the games I wanted for 20 bucks. Um, it was fine. Like, I got it right before Uncharted 4 came out. And yeah. I think that was right around two years after launch. And yeah, I really don't feel like I missed anything anything now i had an xbox one so it's different but hey you don't even need these modern consoles you're going to miss like two games like that's literally it right now demon souls and returnal and the third and fourth will be intergrade and uh ratchet and clank and i at having played two of those i can tell you right now neither of them are worth the console my favorite game still on ps5 is that uh astro's playroom that okay. is like the fun thing. Now, yeah, what do you think really, of that? Let's talk about that. Okay. Can I real fast? I want to touch okay. on something you said. Like, I, you know, I agree with you. I just like my, I guess my phone, big FOMO here was like, we know Final Fantasy 16 is exclusive, right? Whenever if that we, comes out. I, maybe next year. I and think next year at the earliest. I guess like my fear here was not just missing out on Intergrade, but the fact that like, what if they make a surprise announcement and God of War is still slated to come out holiday season and I couldn't get one. So that was kind of the big yeah. driving factor here. 
for me so, yeah, at least. I, but, I, I'm uh, not against your decision at all. I know this, pro- this podcast <laughs> probably is making me sound like I think you're a dummy for getting it. Not at all. I, I totally would get it. And you have the money, so I do, I do think. But for the listener here who's like, say $500 is this crazy expense for you, you are not missing out. If God of War drops this year, it's most likely going to be like Miles Morales, like an eight-hour title, which is a blast, but it's not going to be huge. Um, Intergrade, they're saying, is going to be three hours long. So yeah. if five hundred dollars is worth three hours, or, or if that's like what it's worth, or you know more, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, you know that's going to be up to everybody. Right now, we're looking at a weird thing economically because people have a lot of money, so mm-hmm. nothing's going on sale and everything's going for higher than its value. This yeah. is something we've never seen. Like I want to buy a new TV. I don't have a four K TV. I've wanted one for a long time, and I'm a person who likes to buy things on sale and. TVs aren't going on sale right now because people are buying them at full price. So it's like the worst time to buy things. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, like, I'm sure when November rolls around, you'll probably be able to find something closer to holiday season. Yeah. But, you know, like a lot of other people, I don't know if I want to wait till November. You know, I'd like to play these games in 4K, FOMO, 60. Want, yeah. Want, want, want so so what to... I'm saying, though, is like that's that's my choice and my decision to make. But I'm telling for the person here, if you're like, I think I should wait. Stick with that. If you don't feel that FOMO, wait, because you're not missing out on really anything. I've turned my PS5 on for, I think, 15 hours in total. So it's not yeah. like I've touched it a lot. Now, were those 15 hours incredible? Yeah. Astro's Playroom is one of my favorite games from last year. I think it would have made my top five games, no doubt, if I would have got to it earlier. Um, so I, I'm i really yeah. loving that game. Like it's, yeah. I don't know. Like I, f- I feel like it's... It one, it takes me back to the days when like you used to be able to buy consoles and they came with games to play. Do you remember yeah. that with like Sega yes. Genesis and all that? Even up to the but, Wii, that was a case. Yeah, I've had I've I've spent several hours playing Astro's Play Playroom, um, Playground or Playroom. What is it? Playroom, Playroom, yeah. Playroom, yeah. Astro's and, Playroom. You know, my kids have loved it. Like, uh, you know, my oldest daughter like played the entire game through yesterday, and she's yeah digging it. And I don't know, it's a nice like walk down memory lane. How you're trying to get all the artifacts and the you get the PlayStation and yep. the PlayStation Two and all that. And I lo- I love how it's they create a game to teach you how to use the controller and some of the functions on the PlayStation. Like that is such yeah a clever idea. Totally, hundred percent. Where's your butt? Where's the negative? I know it's coming. Uh, no, I mean, I don't have any negatives. It's, just, it's okay. not something like it's one of those games where like I I finished it, but I don't I'm probably not going to 100 percent it just because it's, you know, maybe I'll go back and play it at some other point. But I, it's not something yeah. I'm like, I feel obsessed with where I need to go and like get all the trophies and all that. So but I mean, it's it's fun. It's fun for the time I spent in it. It's a good game. Yeah, I I would love so I hundred percent it got all the trophies. Um, I would love for there to be a full title like that. The only full title they have that's supposed to be close uh, is Astro's Astrobots Rescue Mission, which was yeah, the PSVR, PSVR exclusive. Yeah. Um, and honestly, because of that, is if PSVR two is backwards compatible, I'll probably pick one up. I don't want to try to do the PSVR original because you have to get a bunch of these like dongles and stuff to connect it to a PS5. I don't have a hey, PS4 let's anymore. Keep this podcast G-rated, all right? <laughs> G-rated. No, no, no dongles. Dongle talk. No dongs. Uh, no dong talk. Uh, yeah. So I I would like to get it, but you know, I mean, who knows when PSVR two is coming out? Who knows what else is on the docket? Sony has a lot of cards. They're playing close to their chest. Like a lot of people, things have been uh, pushed back. But one thing that hasn't pushed been pushed back that finally came out after four plus years of waiting that you've been playing, Biomutant. I did not mm-hmm. end up picking this up. But what do you think of that? I know you got a copy review code, if you will, and were able to sink your teeth into that meaty RPG. So... I feel really bad saying this, but I don't really like it that much. Yeah, it's it's sadly the reviews killed my hype, man. You it's, probably you guys probably remember me talking about how excited I was for it, and the reviews came out and they're all sixes. Which at this point, it's like that means it's okay. So I should just so wait. it's not to say yeah. I mean, I was at Best Buy earlier, so I was like a sixty dollar title, but. You yeah. know, this isn't this isn't to say that it's a bad game. You know, and it's mm-hmm. it's far from it. Like it's got it's there's a lot to un. It's a meaty. It's a pretty meaty game. Mm. Um, meaty. So you start out with like you know, and I'll I'll get to the 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 overall point I'm trying to make here. But 
you get to you start out you know you create your character and like usually when i create a character like i like to let to have like a balance of everything right because in this yeah. one you can choose like strength agility intelligence whatever you want to do but it affects the appearance of your character so yeah like you that's can, annoying if you, yeah if you choose strength like your character's head gets smaller to show that like they're an idiot and like you can't yeah. do the intelligent parts there so, I mean, that's something I didn't really like because it's a circle graph and you kind of move the circle along kind of like if you're editing color on Adobe Premiere, like you move the circle to get the different shades. Okay. Um, so it didn't, don't really, didn't really like that because um, I, I, you know, I want to be well balanced. I don't want to have like my, I guess, attributes affect like my character's appearance. I guess that kind of like yeah. bothered me a little bit. Um, moving on to the, to the game itself, it it feels like it's not quite sure what it wants to be. You know, like you can choose different classes. There's like a rogue class and there's like a sharpshooter class. There's a thief class. I think there's a thief class, but mm -hmm. you know, in this, this class you choose decides what kind of weapons you have, like whether they're going to be guns or swords or, you know, whatever you're going to be playing with my, I chose the rogue class, which has the gun and the sword. Yeah. But it, it doesn't really like, again, it doesn't really feel like it knows what kind of game it wants to be, you know, cause it's, there's, there's different mechanics for the sword, different mechanics for the gun, and you have to kind of like switch between them and it gets really confusing. So it, it, the game almost like feels bloated in terms of me mechanics and things you can do, things you can upgrade, things you can, you know, where, how you equip the weapons and what you equip to the weapons. Mm. So there's I'll just... A lot oh, of sorry. reviewers uh, compared it to like taking parts of Breath of the Wild and Borderlands 3 and a bunch of other things and mashing them together. Mm -hmm. And they said that there were a lot of parts that fell flat in the end because they weren't like a perfect version of any of those things. Did you feel that way or how yeah, do you feel so about I, Yeah. I, I I can see that, you know, I mean, especially with like Breath of the Wild, right? Like there's a lot of room to explore, but there's also, and this is a big thing that bothered me, there's no voiced dialogue in the game. It's all one British guy. Yeah. Basically the talking, the, the narrator, he's narrating the entire thing. And like when you go up to different characters to talk to him, they do the, 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 uh, whoa, 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 like yeah. they do in like Zelda and you have to read all Banjo the dialogue Kazooie, boxes. I think it's Banjo, what you mean. Yeah. And, um, you know, with Borderlands, yeah, you, you can upgrade your skill trees and your weapons and all that, but it just, it's overwhelming, you know, yeah. and the, co the combat is not satisfying to me. Like it's, it feels, I don't know, it's, it's difficult, but it's also like once the combat's over it, you don't feel, get that like sense of satisfaction. Like when you take down an enemy in Zelda or Borderlands, it just kind of like, continues on you know like you wouldn't even there's not even a music change so you wouldn't even know that you were done fighting anything oh wow man that's uh, yeah i i i think there are those issues the gameplay one specifically were what bummed me out like the story stuff as long as it wasn't too in your face is something i could get over but yeah. just this idea that it didn't feel super um concrete in any of the ways that they finish the gameplay stuff like if the combat was like dark souls or something maybe i'd be way into it you know or mm -hmm. if this was better or that was better but because of that it's just so hard to to rush out there and want to spend a 60 dollars title on what is really a double a experience and yeah. will be really 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 cheap in the future you know yeah so i mean you know and getting to the one thing that that really like makes me want probably want to spend a little more time in that world is the fact that you can much like how you know how in like breath of the wild right you can go to the different corners of the map and kind of do things at your own pace and or play how you want to um yeah in this in this one you're trying to like save this tree of life right and you have to like go fight enemies at the end of all the routes and i want to say there's like four or five routes that you got to go to but you can go anywhere in the world however you want to, you know, like you don't, there's no specific mm. order to do things. So you can kind of just spend a lot of time exploring and kind of playing at your own leisure as opposed to like having to follow a strict storyline. I think that's cool. But I also, that, you know, overall, that's the, the breath of the wild influences, I think that yeah. idea, because that's exactly mm -hmm. what you do in breath of the wild. But overall, like the game feels very antiquated, you know, it, mm. it play, it feels like it should be like an early 360 era game. Yeah. 
Yeah, I uh, I was worried that that's what it would be when we started seeing it um, years ago, and I was hoping it'd be better because it looks so cool. And then as this year's been such a uh, a buzzkill, if you will, of very yeah. little excitement, I was hoping it'd be incredible, and then it came out, and everybody's just like, meh. So I don't know, man. I I half of me still wants to pick it up, but I, I'm assuming I only play it for a couple hours myself, so it just doesn't seem worth sixty when it seems like it's gonna be like a game like Elex or. Greedfall or one of the other games that might be pretty good, but you could get for ten bucks, fifteen bucks if you waited. Right. Yeah. Um, you've actually been playing a couple other things too. I I haven't really gotten to too many games this week, but you also started playing Near uh, Replicant. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I start talk about antiquated games, anti- right? From yeah. Xbox 360, that is literally a 360 game that's uh between a remake and a remaster. Yeah, and it 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 still it holds up well. Like it looks nice. You know, I'm I'm mm. not like very far into it. I I guess like when I play RPG games, like I I or JRPGs, I guess I compare them all to Final Fantasy games. Like this is not a Final Fantasy game by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not. It's not got the same budget. It's no. not that game. No, but that's not to say it's not good though. You know, like mm. I'm I like it, and I, like I love the the story concept. Like even. You know, in the beginning of the game, I don't know if you've played Replicant or if you just your history is with the original Nier, but like in the beginning of the game, you're so many years like you're in the past, you're in like our modern time, you know, and you're fighting these shadow beasts and all of a sudden like it jumps hundreds of years into the future and you're like the same characters again. So I don't know, like I haven't gotten far enough into the story to know, like, are these people living the same lives over and over again? Is history repeating yeah. itself? But it, I don't know that something about that like really piqued my curiosity going into it, hmm. you know, and as for the combat in the game, I am, it, it's something that is, it feels good to me. You know, like I like those devil may cry type games and I like the way final fantasy 15, you know, kind of lets you fight the way you want to, instead of like having to go through different menu systems to kind of, uh, you know, attack and all that. So that's kind of what this game is doing right now. Um, the one thing that is throwing me off about it, like, again, when I think about JRPGs, like, I think about bright color palettes. This game does not have a bright color palette. Like, it's a very, very dark game, both in story, tone, colors, all of that. Hmm. Yeah, I uh, I want to get into it. I was more partial to the 360 one near uh, Gestalt, I want to say. It might just come out as near here, where he plays the dad instead of the yeah. brother. Um, but that wasn't part of this remake remaster, which I thought was annoying. Cause it's like, if they really set separately, that's so stupid, but that is Square Enix yeah, charging curious. $60 for lots of the same games over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah. I'm curious why they chose to nix the dad in this game. Um, well, so they were two totally different games. Near Replicant was the first one that came out on PS3 only in Japan. And then Gestalt was the one that came out here. You know, we got, I don't think Replicant ever came out here. So, is, um, as far as is, I know. Is the the first near like a? It's a completely different game. Like I heard that this was just like a. From what I understand, it's just the dad is the different part. Okay, all right, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I'm not. We've talked about this on the podcast. I'm not picking that game up till it's on sale. I still can't finish Automata, and people say that's uh, or Automata, and people say that's incredible. So it's like if I can't even finish the one that a lot of people say is better. How am I going to finish this side quest heavy game where mainly at the beginning of the game, you're just running around doing side quests for people. Oh, and if you oh, don't do absolutely. all of those side quests, you can't get the final ending. Yeah. You know, that's like you, yeah. you walk into the, the village in the beginning of the game and there is, I think you pick up like 12 side quests. Yeah. And they're not all local. Like you have to go to different, you have to zone to different areas to accomplish some of these side quests. And, like, there's this annoying one where you have to deliver a fragile package. And the yeah. moment you get attacked by something, the package breaks. So, like, there's no, you literally have to sneak around an entire, an entire, like, wild area to get to where this package needs to be delivered to. That's, yeah, it sounds miserable, to be honest. Like, I'm not a big fan of fetch quests. I'm not a big fan of ultra grindy missions, but that seems to be a big part of this game. So, I'm not going to pick it up till, like, I'm in the, mood or it's extremely cheap and at that point i'm still not sure i'll ever finish it if i do pick it up it was a game i was kind of on the fence to begin with and i'm definitely talking to dr donna and you I, i'm more on the fence than ever reading so the reviews gonna, watching videos you're gonna pick up a copy to, and finish today it. 
Yeah, yeah I'm going to do okay. it today. I'm going to go today, spend 60 was, on it, months wondering. after it came out, because, you know, I just, just cause, um, and just to cause. The super Brank Finishes Games podcast is what we're going to I finished plenty of things. I finished too. Resident Evil Village. That game was incredible. Um, yeah. Like, I finished a lot of games, but you don't games. hear me bragging about name, it. Name 100 right now. Do it. I could, yeah, I could name I could name 100 games. But All the Spyros. Boom, done. Have you played anything else besides Biomutant? Uh, wait, real quick. One thing we didn't talk about. So you got a PS5. Have you picked up any games yet? Uh, I picked up... Uh, I part, So they have a bunch of stuff going on for like Memorial Day sales. Uh, I, I chatted with you yesterday about how I, I do want to check out Godfall eventually. I found mm. it on eBay for like 20 bucks, brand new. Yeah, People I've seen it for them. $20, brand new too, in stores, like yeah. right after it came out. It's supposed to be not a good game. Yeah, well, I mean, at 20 bucks, so it's not like awful. Uh, so I, I did pick up Sackboy today. Okay. Um, it's like 50 bucks, I want to say yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. If there's a, like, if you're in the market for like PS5 games right now, there's a bunch of good Memorial Day deals going on. I think it probably lasts until the end of today. Okay. Uh, haven't uh, my you know my my kids are playing it, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and play it yet. I did play uh, e- Ease Nine on the yeah uh, started it last night. Yeah, you mean it's a PS4 game, but it's so a you PS4. Play it on... Yeah, I played on the PS5, and so that's okay. you know that that's been it's a it's a JRPG. You know, like it it's there's nothing really special about it. It's just kind of it is what it is. So you um, personally haven't touched Sackboy, right? Because no, that, that's that's the one that I am interested no. in. Um, that's one of the very few PS5 games I don't own, or PS4, PS5 games I don't own, that I am interested in, but I, I still think, you know, Sony went hard on the $70 price point this generation. So all their AAA titles yeah. are 70 So Sackboy came out at, at $60 on PS5, and so now it's, it's on sale also for... On- 50 on but it's also 4. on ps4 yeah if you yeah wanna... and it's also 50 dollars there um yeah. and so you know it just it's on sale now for 50 dollars, which i still think is too high if it was 30 or 40 because from what i gathered it's like a kind of a super mario 3d world knockoff yeah well it reminds me of yoshi's crafted world but onto oh, the wow. as for the price point though like it's yeah, it's fifty dollars at like Walmart, Best Buy, Target, but it's forty. It's forty five dollars at GameStop. You can buy it brand new right now. Oh, okay, but you have to buy a physical version, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I still think those prices are too high. Most little big planet games I've picked up, I've paid twenty dollars for, and I'll play like an hour or two, and yeah, I well, never and, end up getting very far. And that's another thing too. Like if you're looking to play some of the old little big planet games, like all that uh, Sony greatest hit games are on sale for ten dollars. Like no matter where you go. Yeah, so I think that stuff's neat. Um, sadly, you can't play Little Big Planet one or, or two. I think even because those are PS3 games, but you can pick up the PS4 Little, little big, big Planet, planet 3, three, which is not yeah. made by Media Molecule, the company who made the original Little Big, big Planet. Because by I think by at that point they were starting to work on Dreams, which okay. I I picked up for ten bucks the other day, and it's not my cup of tea but it's a interesting title um dreams but it is your glass of tea it's my glass of water not my cup of tea um so yeah so pretty much you've only really played astro's playroom that is a ps5 game yes yeah okay all right have you uh have you played anything else then besides uh replicant and biomutant and astro's playroom uh well i told you i played ease nine um yeah well we're not going to talk about that. We're, I threw it out the window when I said PS4 <laughs> game we talked about before. Anything else? Anything new, my bro? No? Uh, no, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if man, I played any... Man, you play any, nothing, uh, dude. Only three new games this week, man. You're a the loser. Xbox. Yeah, I mean, I've played a little more Mass Effect, but I mean, we don't need to talk about that again. Real quick, though, where are you in Mass Effect? I, I fell off. I don't think I'm going back to that game. I knew that was a mistake to buy it. So, so I got I got to Navaria and I'm about to go looking for Matriarch Benezia and is Novaria the ice planet? The I ice can't planet. Re- yeah. Okay, that was the I one. Was, I like that. I one. was foolish because like I should have gone to get um what's her name Liara the, the uh, Liara first because yeah that's what I always did. Yeah, you need to level up your your stats a little bit because Navaria is hard. Like it's not yeah. It doesn't level with you like there everyone's several levels above you and if you it's helpful to be able to like have um what do you call it the conversation points where you're able to like talk people yeah, out of charisma. things yep yeah so i didn't have any of that so i ended up just like having to shoot my way through this facility instead of being able to chat with people do they tell you that the level 
uh, levels on each of the planets, or is it just I can't remember, man. I've played no, so they long. don't. You just kind of okay. go and you gauge it, and then you're like, oh, I should probably leave and come back. But I mean, man, it's, it takes I too much time. I, yeah, I wonder if I looked that stuff up online up online when I was younger because I I went in I think the order you're supposed to, which is Liara, then the next planet, whatever it was, the Novaria last. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I I probably will never play that game again. They're not doesn't seem like anybody's adding quick uh, resume to any of their games, which to me is like the biggest faux pas you could do. They've essentially destroyed the thing that the Xbox Series X had going for it. Um, I'm hoping this is short lived. I'm hoping by the summer they figure out a way around it. But yeah, I'm not. I've not really wanted to play Judgment. I've not wanted to play any of these games because I have to wait through all of the loading to try them out again. And for me, it's like. Well, it's not why I bought an Xbox Series X. Um, we I, we need to start a separate podcast called Brank Hates Loading, and then yeah, you just like it be you can just like let it go, just let just let it all out, man. I think my I think my complaints are really fair, man. Like I really don't think I'm complaining about anything too crazy because I bought a Series X with quick resume, which was one of their main features. It would be like if I bought a PS5 and they said, oh, dual. Uh, Dual Sense works for every game, and then I try it out and it works on one game. And you're like, "Wait, you sold me this thing with this overpriced controller? You said it would work on every game, and now it doesn't work on anything." So, and this is literally the last few months. Every game that's come out on Xbox doesn't work with Quick Resume. The only one that has is Resident Evil Village, which is one of the main reasons I played through it. So, the fact that Judgment doesn't work with it, Mass Effect doesn't work with it, like it's just to me that's I. Like, I'm tempted to, like, contact Microsoft customer support to see what's going on just because just it pisses me Yelp off. Review. <laughs> to write a bad Yelp review. That's not who I am as a person, but I don't like that idea, right? Like, I think you would be pretty upset if you bought your PS5 and they changed it and said, oh, oh Final Fantasy 7 8 Grade won't work on it. And you'd be like, wait, I just spent 700 bucks on this thing and I bought it for this idea and this thing won't work on it now? Yeah, so... To defend my honor <laughs> against you, you honorless fool, um, I will uh, say that. Anyways, let's get to a little bit of news before we hit the dusty trail. There's been some crazy rumblings and a rumorings that there's going to be a new Nintendo Switch. Have what? you been reading about this junk? Yeah. Okay. So I actually read something that said they're going to be making things exclusively for this Switch. I don't... Is is there any truth to those rumors, or is that? I mean, something... there's there's a precedent. Yeah, they've done that before with the uh, new 3DS. It was the only way you could play Xenoblade Chronicles uh, Remaster or whatever on the 3DS. That's you had to have the so, new Nintendo 3DS. That's so dumb, though. Like, because you know, I, I was reading the articles about it, say like, hey, this is the Switch Pro is still going to come out, and then I forget what games they named a couple games. They're like, and these are being developed exclusively for the Switch Pro. I just like I don't. There's so many different types of switches out, and people have been trying to get these for months. And some kids have finally be able, you know gotten one, so it's going to be kind of sucky if they have to go out and buy another one, which will probably take another like amount of months in order to be able to find. Yeah, I uh, I, I get what you're saying, but this is Nintendo. <laughs> We've talked about how like you know, excuse my language, how shitty they are as a company. That's like their mo is to do whatever they want all the time. And if you don't like it, go jump off a cliff. Um, yeah, I think it will have a couple games. I don't think it's going to be Breath of the Wild 2. I think it's going to be stuff that nobody cares about that will be exclusive to the new Nintendo Switch, which is probably going to be the title. It's not going to be called Nintendo Switch Pro. I'd be very surprised. Maybe if we're lucky, it'll be called Super Nintendo Switch, but I doubt it. My guess is it's going to be called New Nintendo Switch because that's what their naming convention, Super convention Nintendo is. Super Nintendo Switch. I'd rather that. That makes more sense than new Nintendo Switch, which is how they called the 3DS. It really got dumb when it was new Nintendo 2DS XL. That was what the 2DS, which plays 3DS games, but doesn't have the 3D slider on it, but it had the new thing because it could play the upgraded games. So stupid. Anyways, the rumor is that they're going to announce it this week. So this is according to like comic oh. book gaming or whatever. Yeah, they're yeah, pretty reliable. So That's what I'm... I, I don't know. I don't know if they are, but I'm just saying there's there's been lots of rumors that it's going to be announced soon, if not this week. A lot of online retailers have started listing it. Um, Jeff Grub Grub, if you know him, he's like a famous like games reporter. He has mentioned that it's coming out soon. He thought it would be coming out last week or announced last week, but it sounds like it is coming. 
Um, I personally will probably pick one up if it is more than just a screen and a console that plays 4K games. Realistically, I'll pick one up even if it is that because my Nintendo Switch is old and hopefully their Joy-Con got better or anything about it got better. But, you know, I, I can't be sure that will happen. Nintendo is notorious for being a horrible company that does things that are anti-consumer. If anybody wants to disagree with me, I can point to a million things online where that is what they do. I love their games. I love their products. I think the Nintendo Switch is one of the best consoles ever made. But I, you can't tell me that Nintendo Switch doesn't do just like horrible practices like Jeez, oh buy a bunch it, of man you hate buy, the switch Jeez. buy a bunch of virtual console games and you don't get ownership to them anymore you know like it's done you don't get it Can, on on, on that note we were supposed to remember mario 3d all-stars was supposed to be like go go away like it's supposed to be done at in december it is yeah, it is done, but like you go to stores and the, the stocks of that game are so high that like they're overstocked on them. So you can still get it physically in most places. Yeah, it looks like even on Amazon, it's selling yeah, for about sixty so bucks. I'm just curious, like when it's going to become like the because you know Nintendo does that, right? Like you can get their the old Mario games, like you can get on just about any console. You know they've re released that stuff a lot over the years, but it's like the big titles like Sunshine Galaxy. 64 has such limited releases but then you know all these people were selling these these pre-orders for this game for like hundreds of dollars on ebay and now like you can still buy it for 60 bucks like target or walmart yeah i mean what i'd say to that is pick it up because once Just they're done it with up, it man. they're they're not going to sell it again i mean they've already run out in a lot of spaces and there are already people trying to sell for fifteen thousand dollars on ebay so yeah i mean yeah I, I all i'll say is this like they that practice was incredibly dumb of them and they did do it it's not on the eShop anymore well, so yeah. yeah you can find I mean, it physically but it's it's yeah they're, so they're they're trying to create demand like that's what nintendo has always done that especially with their first party titles like that's why you see like mario odyssey and zelda and stuff never go on sale for you know but beneath the a 40 dollar price point yeah i just i just still think that's a practice i don't like it's just who I am. You know what I mean? Like, I also don't like the practice in Japan that is not over here where games, depending on Wait, Japan their Japan is val not here? Yeah, Japan's not here. I don't know it's if you knew that. It's, uh, it's different country. It's not oh. uh, Japan, California. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah, Japan has this weird policy there where depending on the game's um, demand, y it costs more money. So like oh. Final Fantasy VII Remake in Japan costs $80. That's um, just the standard price. They don't so have MSRP it over there. Is there a roof? Uh, no. Oh. As far as I know, no. So it's essentially like, you know how we have the low, we have $60 and then you have uh, deluxe editions that go up to different prices. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if there was no standard pricing. So you so, would have to get it on day one if you want to play it for a cheaper price. What do you mean? You'd have to get it on day one. Well, like if doesn't the price go up with demand, but doesn't no, have to no, be no, out no, no, for no, no, a, a no, little no. bit before they, demand goes no, up? No, 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 no. They decide the price well before based on what they believe the demand will be. Kind of like how Dragon Quest games always sell super well in Japan, so those games are Ooh, worth more money. So okay. it's like that. So that yeah. is a Japanese practice. Japanese practices we here in America would not like a lot of those things. I love Japan. I think it's an incredible country. I went there last, you know, a couple of years ago. I would love to go there again. All Japanese people are incredibly friendly. But the way we do capitalism and the way they do capitalism is different enough that it is frustrating when you're there and you pay, you know, a premium for stuff that's not exactly that. So yeah. by that being said, you were talking about the, this all goes back to the new Nintendo Switch, which is what I'm assuming the name's going to be because they have this terrible naming convention they love. Um, and my guess is it's going to have a game or two that you must own the new Nintendo Switch to play. And the new Nintendo Switch is supposed to be more expensive than the original Nintendo Switch. So people are assuming it's going to be about $400. And as far as I know, it has really no features besides 4K upgrades. So no faster loading times, nothing else. That's that's the rumor right now. So if that's the case, you have to pay an additional $100 to get 4K on a console that can barely run games at 720p right now. So yeah, to, for me, like that, I think that's a really bad business practice. I don't like that, you know? So if I'm like, a, what, he said that because, you know, he, he's, he's anti-Nintendo. No, I love Nintendo. Bought all the Mario games. But yeah, this it's going to be a shit show. Um, it's not going to be something I think any of us will like. Yeah, I am 
Like, yeah. I'll be, you know, I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't think that it's going to sell very well because I think it's going to sell incredibly well. You think so? I don't think because I mean the the, the switch it, it has a lot of um, you know kids already have this switch right, and I think that it's going to yeah. be hard convincing parents to like go out and buy more another switch for their kids just what because if the new, it. What if the game that's exclusive is the new Mario Kart? So I mean, then there might be a case to buy it, but I don't think I don't see Nintendo doing something like that. Why not? Because that's just that sounds like a a dumb way to uh, lose money. I I mean, we're talking about a company who locked games behind a four or a six month transaction period for nothing other than that it's to celebrate Mario was the excuse. Yeah, dude, n- they could do whatever they want, and people will pay money for it. I'm one of those suckers. So yeah, but I I think that there's limits to you know. No. I mean, maybe for adults it doesn't matter, but for again for like a little kid that wants a switch and wants to be able to play this new game, I don't see parents like justifying going out and buying a, a new four hundred dollar switch just to play one game. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. You know, maybe we'll also do more stuff. Maybe they'll also even lock more games behind it. You know, we won't know till this thing's announced maybe it'll be three hundred dollars and it will only do 4k and no games will be exclusive to it it better I'm just play saying, in 4k and tell me i'm beautiful every time i turn it on you I, know That's i just love I the want. idea because like i i am assuming i'm not the only person in america who still doesn't even own a 4k tv and they're making this upgraded switch that won't run the games better portably the dock is going to be the only thing that's going to be better to run at 4K. So you're still going to have games with bad load times and low res graphics portably, but can run at 4K on a TV. It's just so backwards to me. The whole scenario is like wild, but so, I'll so probably just, buy one. So I guess I shouldn't for, complain. For our listeners out there, uh, Brank's big complaint here. He doesn't have a 4K TV. He's still running a... 32 inch Panasonic yeah. tube television with a built in 480i. Yes, I yeah. do 480i, so, no composites. Uh, just gotta forgive him his anger here. I, I mean, do you do you feel differently than me though? Like, do you really feel like I'm like being super insane about this? Like, if they come out with this thing and it can only the only difference is it does 4K, but they lock a game or two behind it, wouldn't that make you a little bit frustrated? No, I am frustrated. It's not. I'm not frustrated enough to go out and buy something new. Like if this was a whole new console, like and okay. this was going to be like the next ten years of not ten years, you know, mm-hmm. five or six years of gaming. Then yeah, I could see the justification for going out and buying it. But I mean, if you're locking two or three games behind a, you know, the the label of Switch Pro, like that's kind of new dumb. Nintendo like, Switch. I just, I just don't see that. I, I just don't see people reacting to that in a way that makes them want to just like run out and grab a new switch. You know, I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm talking to the guy who just bought a $700 PS five to play a two hour DLC. I think people will spend a lot of money on things, you know, just because they like it. So if well, that next yeah. game is Mario Kart or a Mario title or a Zelda title or a Metroid title, I think people will buy it. If it is what the new 3DS was, which was Xenoblade, then yeah, I don't think it's going to get a lot of sales based on that. Um, But I will see, man. All I'm going to say is like, people have money right now. Companies who are have not like been hiding their heads under the sand know that people are willing to spend MSRP or higher. I have a friend who was like, I wish they would have sold the PS5 and Xbox Series X at $600 so less people could get them so I could have got one easier. That's what he told me. He's, he's a game industry vet, and he was hoping they'd be more expensive because it would stop people, and they would have had the demand for it. I promise you. You and I might have had to think twice, but they would have had the demand. So, I mean, it's so cheaper than what I paid for it. So Yeah. I, all I'm saying, though, is, is that's the thing. So we're dealing with like a new world where I thought when these consoles launched at 500, I thought that was crazy. I thought they wouldn't sell them. And, you know, they are incredibly hard to find still today. So, you know, a phone is what, $1,400 nowadays to buy a, a cell phone? Insane. Absolutely. That, I mean, yeah, this is like my second phone that I've had where I've had to go on a payment plan to like own the phone. You know, like it's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's wild. So to get out of negativity, though, let's start talking about some of the fun rumors and stuff that happened this week. Because I I get really heated when I come into 
practices I disagree with. So when I see Nintendo practices, which are generally anti-consumer all the time, they, uh, you know, we talked about Skyward Sword selling uh, fast travel in a game for $25 locked behind a limited time amiibo. I get pretty frustrated by it. But on the other side, we had some interesting stuff that came out. Sonic had a 30th anniversary. So all them sweet Sonic games were announced. There are now Sonic uh, mascot uniforms in Two Point Hospital. I don't know the connection outside of they're both uh, published by Sega. Uh, there's a new Sonic game coming out next year. Sonic Colors, a game I've never played before, is getting a remaster. I believe. Yeah. Um, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's a re- it's a remaster. It okay. So this is you know I I played this game for a little bit and like it's not it's not something I was I was like yeah I would love to have a remaster of this game. You know it's like it's fun it's cool but it's just not I don't know it's not great. And, yeah, I mean you know yeah. Oh sorry. Well, this leads me to a question I had for you is is you know. Sonic has struggled moving into newer generations of of games or, or con- consoles, right? Like Mario got onto the 3D platforming era like flawlessly, yeah. whereas Sonic has always struggled. So, what do you think is the issue with Sonic as because, opposed to Mario? Well, one, Sonic always tried to focus on his speed. That is the impetus for the whole game sonic the hedgehog you run as fast as possible across a map which means you're not focusing on like cleverly timed jumps or platforming Mm -hmm. which is what made mario interesting you're just trying to run as fast as possible and dodge enemies so it's like more of like a speed runner game everyone you know where you like memorize where the enemies are and you jump and you go down the path there's sonic was sonic was like probably one of the first games with multiple linear uh multiple paths because it wasn't a super linear game. You had to go from left to right, but you could go like five different ways. There's I remember different Sonic. different ways to do it, yeah. Yeah, so when they took Sonic into the 3D era, which I still love Sonic Adventures. Not Maybe it doesn't hold up, but that was one of my favorite games. I got a Dreamcast the day it released, 9 9 mm-hmm. and I had Sonic Adventure, and I played the crap out of that game. I love that game. Is it a bad yeah. game? Yes, I love it, though. Um, so the problem was they still try to focus on that speed angle and it's not as much fun in 3d unless you're just racing, which is not what a Sonic game is supposed to be. A Sonic game is supposed to be a clever platforming mixed with speed. So what their games end up being are kind of like, um, what are they called? Infinite runners or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. The one where you just keep going. It's it. They kind of all are like that. And at that, at that style, I don't like those. Very few people like those games. But that's kind of what it has to be if you're going to focus on speed. So this, the character they made doesn't transition well. Mario is the king of jumps. Sonic is the king of speed. So if they would have just made Sonic a racing game like years and years ago, it might have actually been gone better for him. But then it would just be a racing game. Yeah, and you know they've tried with like Sonic Forces and uh, I forget you know Sonic Unleashed. Like they've they've tried to do the platforming thing and mix it with like going fast. They've also it, tried just, uh, RPGs with Sonic the Dark Brotherhood by Bioware. Yeah, that was yeah, crazy. yeah. And there's like sh- uh, they try to do like a first person or third person shooter right with Shadow Shadow, Shadow of the Hedgehog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that was you know they've tried a bunch of different things and nothing's ever quite stuck. And mm. I'm I'm curious if like Sonic is something that needs to go away, or if Sonic if if their Sega's marketing has just done a poor job of like understanding what people want from a Sonic the Hedgehog game. I think the real problem with Sonic Man isn't Sonic; it's you and I. Sonic isn't made for people our age. Um, I deal with children all the time. I'm a children's entertainer. I get asked for Sonic more than Mario by two to one. Children oh. love Sonic. They could care, or they they like Mario as well. Most children love Sonic the Hedgehog. They like his games because they're generally very simple games, and you normally only have to move left and right and jump. You know, there's not a right. lot to it. Um, I don't think Sega needs to do anything, man. I think Sonic's still a juggernaut. We just don't understand it because the games aren't fun, so we don't play them. But yeah. they're doing incredibly well. Like, I don't think the Sonic 30th anniversary is them, like, it, from a state of despair. It's from a state of, like, no, no, hey, we got not. Sonic. Our movie yeah. was killer. People want a sequel. And that movie was good. If you watched it, was. it, it was, like, a pretty fun movie. Yeah. Um, Our movie was killer. We're going to put all these games on cloud. We're going to make a new Sonic. We're going to release another old Sonic for 40 bucks. A bunch of you are going to buy it for your kids. Um, There's going to be a million ways to play these games. Yeah. It's All I'm saying is, like, the problem with Sonic isn't Sonic. It's us. 
we don't like it because it's not as much fun anymore and it's not a very great game. But yeah. most kids don't think of it that way. They like the blue hedgehog that goes fast. They're going to mm-hmm. be bad at the game anyways. They're going to barely be able to finish one level. So they're, and I don't know if you've tried to show a kid Super Mario Odyssey, but for a lot of kids, that is way too complicated of a game. They don't know how to play it. Like oh, my niece and nephew yeah, yeah, can like- barely move and jump, let alone be switch hats to all the characters and then do you know all these things like that that the really crappy game that came out earlier this year Ball and Wonder World that's made for kids mm-hmm. there's only two buttons that's why games are yeah. made that way cuz kids can't do all of the things that an adult can do yeah so yeah man i think Sonic the Hedgehog's 30th anniversary is like made total sense it's not for me but it's fun to watch cuz people seem to like love that character I don't see myself ever getting into another Sonic game for the rest of my life. You know, unless we have kids and they love it and I play it with them. I don't personally see myself ever wanting to buy a Sonic game, which is a bummer. But, you know, I grew up. I also don't buy Beanie Babies. You know, like it's that (laughs) there's things that change in life. I think the only thing I bought as from a childhood that I keep trying to like that I don't like is Pokemon. That's the only thing I think I keep uh, trying to love. Yeah. But I, Pokemon I, Sword is not good, in my opinion. It's not bad, but it's not great. And yeah. I just I keep trying to love these games, and I don't like them. Yeah, I guess like the difference with Pokemon is it's like it's trying to hang on to its adult fans, whereas like Sonic doesn't really care that much. I guess. I mean, but is it trying to hang on to its adult fans? Like every Pokemon game is like over explaining and like you spend a lot of time going over it's basic got such stuff. Great written dialogue, though. Oh it's just, man, it's so... I know the stories are incredible. <laughs> Everybody goes to Pokemon for the story, especially the hard hitting so, adult flavor. So many layers, so many I, layers. Yeah, I just mean though, like, is Pokemon for adults? Because it's, it, I feel like every game is your introduction to the series. You know, where they're yeah. all really slow. Hold, hold your you hand all, through the whole thing. Yeah. So hopefully Ar- Arceus or whatever it's called, that game that comes out next, they got a date for it this last week, January of 2022. I am hoping that that is a fun Pokemon game for us, but yeah. it could also be crappy. And, you know, we right. won't know until it launches, but uh, about Sonic, it's doing killer. Another game that I played the first one of, but there's a sequel coming out now or soon called Dying Light 2. Do you know... Uh, do you know that title? Yeah, this this game, Dying Light, was announced. What was it? Four or five years ago now, and like it. I want to say twenty eighteen. Um, I could be wrong because yeah, I, I re- really remember twenty eighteen E three. I was at E three when they were uh, they were talking about this game, and there's a bunch of stuff out for it. And I thought that it got canceled, but I guess it's still coming out. Yeah, so they uh, they had some issues in I want to say twenty nineteen something happened at the end like with Chris Avalon the writer sexual stuff blah 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 you know the drill and um, so they got him off of it and then the game went through a really 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 troubled twenty twenty where it was supposed to launch it got postponed nothing nobody heard anything from it all last year and last year was the year that never ended so we all thought it pretty much ended well the beginning of this year they came back you know. Uh, and like, I don't know what this reimagining of the game is. I don't know if it's going to be what they originally thought it was going to be, but whatever it is, it, they've given a date it's December 7th. So it very easily could get postponed and not come out this year, but it is a December 7th game. Uh, the trailer looked pretty cool, but I don't really know what the actual plan is like i i don't know if they're keeping with their huge repercussions to the world which is what chris avalon was working on is like a story where everything has so many layers and if you don't give the water to these people then the whole game changes or if you open the floodgates then it becomes an underwater city i don't know if they're going with any of those ideas anymore but you know what if it comes out to good reviews i'll give it a shot i the first one is fun enough it is uh has some uh, quirks it's not my favorite game but it's neat You know, like I played about five hours of it, enjoy what I played. I like how they're four player co op games, or at least the first one was, hoping this one will be as well, because it's like kind of a Skyrim esque uh, zombie game with, you know, four player co op. Um, It does seem like they're adding grappling hooks and paragliders and all types of stuff to make this game more traversable. So that should be fun, man. Uh, You think you'll give it a shot, or did you play the first one, or no? Uh, I never played the first one, and I am interested in this. I just don't know if, like, I'm going to. You ha- not have time, but just I don't know if it's like interesting enough. If you'll for care me enough, to, yeah, I don't know if I'll care enough. 
Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what the end of this year looks like. You know, December is generally a slow month, so I think they're probably smart by putting it there if it makes yeah. it out. But we'll also see if, if this E3 is just going to be wall-to-wall stuff. You know, if Starfield actually well, comes out this year, maybe we'll be busy. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going to say. Like, I think in the next couple of weeks, we'll know, like, what the holiday season looks like so people can kind of pick, you know, they'll they'll know, like, what games they want to play before the year's out and all that. Yeah, I, I'm really interested. Um, speaking of games that uh, were had dates and got pushed back and uh, just are now showing up, Far Cry 6. I want to say that was originally supposed to be a February 2021 title. Got delayed. They didn't really have any news about it. Uh, they just announced this week. It's coming out October 7th, 2021. Such an interesting release date for that game. Yeah, it is weird. Um, I don't. I think the trailer looked really good. It totally looks like a Far Cry game. We'll see how different it is from the last one. But it did look like a lot of fun. Did you watch that gameplay trailer? Yeah, it looks fun. I mean, that's what I keep telling everyone. Like, it looks cool. It's uh, you know, I'm I'm in. Tr- I love the rocket launcher backpack. That is like the coolest thing I've ever seen. But yeah. it also and the, the main character, the the girl. Uh, you know, she looks like she's. She looks like she's more invested in what's going on in the world, whereas in like Far Cry Five, you're just like a cop who's in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, it is funny that they're saying that this game isn't political, even though it seems like it takes place in Cuba oh, and is about guerrilla warfare. Feels in very Cuba. political. <laughs> yeah. Also, is the girl the main character? I can't tell because you know Far Cry games are traditionally first person, and the yeah. camera's been behind her in every trailer. So yeah, I'm like, that's that's also very true. Yeah, um, I think she is the main character, but I just I'm not a hundred percent sure. So it's hard to yeah. say. But I like it, the Macarena CD mm-hmm. shooter. That I think that's neat. I like the fact you have an alligator or a little corgi as your. Uh, I think it's a corgi, a wiener dog, a dachshund. Yeah. I guess as your like companions to go around and uh, mm-hmm. to mess things up. Um, I think it looks good, man. Uh, but we also had probably. Oh, what, what do you want to say about it before we? Oh, move I was going to say it looks thing. it looks good, but like I this is what I keep telling people. I'm like I don't know how eager I am to jump back into the world of Far Cry at this moment. You know, like really, I, no, not to say I don't like it, but it's just yeah. that's one of those games. Like I love you know coming out the holiday season, we'll get like a Halo or whatever. But a lot I love like the the short eight to you know sixteen hour experiences. But a Far Cry game like. You can spend hours and hours and hours in these worlds, and I just don't know like how eager I am to do that right now. You know, especially if there's a lot of good stuff coming out during holiday season, which is why the release date's so weird. Because traditionally they come out in like February or March when mm-hmm. they, you know, you have you have a few months to get through it before something new comes out. Yeah, I mean, we'll see, man. I really think this this holiday season might be a rough one, game-wise, game release-wise. So I'm actually pretty excited. It's been three and a half years since Far Cry 5 came out. I did not yeah. buy New Dawn, and I didn't buy any of the DLC for Far Cry 5. So in that way, like, it's been long enough. I'm happy to try it out if it's good, you know? there's yeah. That's a big if, but I think it's going to yeah. be good. I think it will be fun. I think it's going to be Far Cry. You know, I'm just hoping it's more Far Cry 4 than Far Cry 5, because I enjoyed 4 a lot more. 4 had a little bit more... Um, of a path to go on where five was very open you just do whatever you want mm-hmm. and i really think five suffered from that idea it was like you had to get points to take over the place and it was boring in in my mind yeah. actually um one last big announcement and we'll probably have to push our e3 talk out to next week which we'll do hopefully and we'll get that um that really big e3 what we think's going to happen next week is uh horizon horizon forbidden west uh they talked about that Uh, This recent week, um, or I guess last week when you're listening to this, and yeah, it it looked cool. I don't know if you saw the gameplay trailer. I think it looks good. Uh, Visually, it looks really good. It's going to be a PS4 and PS5 game, so if you don't have a PS5, no need to panic. It'll be on PS4 as well. Um, They did not give a release date for it. I was thinking it would come out this year, and it's still May, but the fact they didn't choose a release date is real wild. A lot of uh, media outlets are speculating that it'll still come out this year but i mean yeah the the lack of release date does make you wonder i think uh, i've heard some people say it like sony doesn't want to show their hand too much so they're waiting to see what this holiday season looks like and if they need to put it out you know my guess is if we get what we're thinking we're getting which is halo infinite potentially starfield sony will put it out because they need something to take on those joggernauts but you know We'll see if that's the case. I don't think God of War Ragnarok is coming out this year. I think I would be amazed if it does. 
But we'll see, man. This is going to be a weird E3, especially because there's no Sony. So we won't know about any of those games till Sony decides to tell yeah. us. But is So is Sony not doing their own thing, though? I mean, they did their own thing last year. They did a uh, state of play that kind of talked about what was coming out. Uh, no, they did that in August. It had like nothing to do with E3. Um, cause you're talking about the PS5 reveal, right? N- n- yeah. Well, I'm not talking about E3, but they usually do some kind of summer gaming video or conference or whatever that talks I mean, about. I'm sure they'll do a state of play, but those are anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes long. And they sometimes will only show one game and sometimes they'll show yeah. five. So I don't think it's going to be anything big. I would set your, your biggest Sony exclusives, I think are going to be coming from Square Enix. Because the rumors of the Final Fantasy Origin, the Neo, uh, the Team Ninja, the Neo guys making the Final Fantasy Dark Souls-like game that is Sony exclusive. I think we'll see that at E3 probably. Um, the Final Fantasy 16, I don't think it's coming out this year, but I think we'll see that at E3 probably. Uh, yeah, man. So I think all that stuff we're we're going to see from Square Enix. But I think Sony themselves, they've told us what they're going to release in the next year, year and a half. And that's Horizon Forbidden West. And God of War Ragnarok. I don't think we're going to get a Spider-Man game for at least another, you know, maybe the end of next year at the earliest. Uh, what do we Uncharted? Like, I don't even really like that series very much, but that's maybe we'll yeah. get one next year. Um, maybe Bloodborne Two if we're lucky next year. But I think Sony's told us what they're going to have this year, and it might be Horizon Forbidden West. It might not. And it, uh, if God of War Ragnarok's an eight-hour title, it may come out this year. Otherwise, I don't see them finishing that game in three years. It took them like I want to say, I want to say it took them four or five years to make the remake, um, or the reboot, the one yeah. that we played. Um, so I don't know, man. Well, let's let's spend some time talking about E3 next week, man. As we get hot and heavy into all these doldrums of the summer, because really, like, there's nothing coming out this week game wise. I don't know if there's there's nothing that I can think of besides like. A weird Warhammer game I'm kind of slightly interested in called Necromunda, Hired Gun. But I'm really waiting on reviews because that game looks like it could also be horrible. So, uh, yeah, Yeah. it's a weird, like, waiting game. And I I keep wanting to pick up a game right now. You know, we're on Memorial Day. Right now we're recording this. And I haven't had anything new to play for a bit, even though I have these games I've bought and I haven't really played much of. But at the same time, it's like, well, I'm getting Ratchet & Clank for sure. I already pre-ordered that. And I will probably pick up Intergrade. So it's like, I don't know if I should buy another thing when there's two titles I'm going to play next week and E3's days after that, and there's probably going to be shadow drops. Like, my assumption is there's been a... And I'll just throw this out on the podcast right now, probably bring it up next week too. I think Psychonauts 2 is going to be released during the Microsoft E3. Oh, that would would make sense. It's either going to be there or a summer title because they've talked about that for forever. They haven't released anything yet. Totally see it. Um, do you have anything you want to add about that stuff before we start hitting the road? No, no. I mean, uh, I'm sure there's going to be some surprise stuff from, you know, they, they always do that though. They, they come out on stage during the Xbox conference and say, and you can play this today. You know, it's going to be for sure. I'm, I'm really excited for that, man. I really am excited for this E3. I think it's going to be incredible. There's only really three, uh, press con four press conferences, uh, Nintendo, Microsoft, Ubisoft, and Square Enix that I know of. There's going to be a pre E3 press conference by, um, THQ Nordic. The, the company has like all those other companies. So Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. This could be a wild E3. It could be a really sad, depressing, bleak one, but I'm really hoping we see some stuff from Nintendo and Microsoft because otherwise I, I don't know what this year looks like, you know? So, okay, my bros, sorry about ending on such a sour, somber, dour, butt note. And it's mainly butts. Uh, we will be back to slap you hard in the pig. Peace. Oh.